So today was one of those days, it was really nice outside, so we went for a lot of walking. Damn, that moon's bright, middle of the day. Well, not middle of the day, end of the day. <laughs> it's almost a shame to have to go in and make a video, but I'll do it just for you guys. Now today we're gonna go ahead and install Python. And we wanna get familiar inside of Python just so we can actually start coding, nope, cooler things inside of our Raspberry Pis. Now, if you're not interested in Raspberry Pis or Python in general, well, we'll just save the time. You can skip the video now, and well, there'll be something new tomorrow. But for everyone else, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install Python, the latest version. I think it's 3.6 is what I'm running. And that comes with idle. So we'll go ahead, we'll set idle up. Well, there's really no setup for it. We'll just take a look at idle, some of the things you can do in the command line and in its text editor. And then uh, we'll all be set up and at that level playing field for when we start diving into well, more Python things. But anyway, let's go. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and install Python. And then after we're done that, we're gonna take a look at idle and how to use it for a command line, as well as being able to create actual scripts with it. So go ahead, take your browser of choice, point it over to python.org. Then if you hover over the download link, you can get the latest one for whatever version it detects you're on not showing it just go ahead and actually click the download a button then you have the option to pick the version you need for this series I'm going to be using Python 3 and I'm going to use the latest version of it at the time of this recording it's 3.6 now take note that there have been some releases to earlier versions since then and if you're really interested you can head over to Wikipedia and find out why they forked 2 and 3 but uh, for me I'm just going to stick with Python 3.6 so go ahead and download that and then once you have it downloaded, make sure to go ahead and install it. Once you have it installed, go ahead and open up idle three. And this is gonna open up your Python shell. Now we see the three little greater than signs. This is just its way of waiting for a command. So we could go in and do something, you know, like print, hello world. And sure enough, we get the output, hello world. We could also go in and do math. We could even go ahead and assign variables here. So we'll just say, I don't know, var one is equal to three, var two is equal to five. And then we can say var one plus var two, eight. So everything that we do here in the command line, it actually remembers. Now I don't really like to write my scripts in the command line. So what I'm gonna do, I'll move this over here. I'll come up to the file menu and select a new file. And it's gonna open up its text editor. And then inside of here, I can actually go ahead and start writing my scripts. So again, we'll just do print. And I forgot my quotes. So again, we'll just do hello world. I am in a script. Let's save that off. And to save it off, we can come up to file and hit save. Or if we tried to run it, which is F5 by default, that allows you to save it automatically. If I hit F5, well, let's do it the other way first. Let's just save. And take note of the file name. You can name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm just gonna call it Hello World. But the ending is a .py. And that allows your computer, when you're actually double clicking on it, to know what kind of program it is, or at least what kind of file it is. So it'll know to load it up as a Python file. I'm just gonna go ahead, put this on my desktop. And we'll save it off. And then depending on what program you have to set to open your Python files, if you right click it, open with, depending what you have set as the default, the icon's gonna change. But now that it's saved, let's go ahead and hit F5. And we notice over here that we get a restart for the console. And then it goes ahead and runs the actual script. And just like with the console, we can go ahead and save variables here. I'll say tax is equal to 0 0.07, 7%. .07. And I'm gonna say total is equal to, let's make it easy, $100. And then we'll go print total times tax. And I already see an error there. Let me just quickly show it to you. So I'll go ahead and F5. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save the source. So we'll save it. I'm missing the parentheses. 
This is one of the differences between version two and version three of Python. In version two, print was a statement. In version three, it's a function. So for those that have a little bit of programming experience, knows that we gotta have a parentheses to pass in parameters. So let's go ahead, we'll run this now. And there we go, it went ahead and it printed out a value. Might not be the exact value you're expecting to see come out, but we'll talk about that in a later video. Today, I just wanna make sure everyone is set up. And if you are gonna follow along with the Python programming, at least these introductory ones, I'm gonna to stick to using idle because it's available to everyone. It comes with Python, you don't have to do anything fancy, just install it and it's there. Later on, we'll move to other IDEs. My personal favorites for Python right now is Atom, but I might go ahead and try out Visual Studio. But anyway, there we go. We can now go ahead and create scripts, save scripts. We should have Python installed and we should be ready to go ahead and start delving into Python a little bit deeper so we can start programming those Raspberry Pis a little bit better. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'd be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.